Welcome back to another edition of Forecast Lab. Rapid weather changes across much of the country as we get back into that progressive flow. An atmospheric river appearing down there in northwestern Mexico. First, let's take a look at our world temperature extremes. The world's hot spot over the past 24 hours, deep in the Australian interior, that's going to be the town of Kintor. And that's a look at what the town looks like. Not very much there at all. At the other extreme, Oymyakon, only dropping to minus 54. Starting to get a little bit warmer there in Siberia. And back on Wednesday, we talked about this place. Where could that be? I mean, it is very beautiful. Look how lush it is there. That could be someplace in Illinois or Missouri. That is Fort Liard, located in the Northwest Territories. Surprising, huh? You know, you think of the Northwest Territories, you think of tundra and ice. That really surprised me and I just had to share that with you all. Some good guesses by 900 BCY6, David Wagner, and especially J.E. Miller. Congratulations on that. I'm going to take you to a real meteorological geoguesser location. So where is this? This does have weather significance, and we'll talk about this on next Wednesday. So where could that be? Well, you've got this field out here. You've got these bluffs. What could this place be? Anyway, we'll talk about that on Wednesday. So if you think you know where that is, or you want to leave a guess, post in the comments. Okay, let's take a look at the weather around the U.S. We've got a plunging cold air mass coming through the Great Lakes region, northerly flow all through the eastern half of the country, an outgoing frontal system right there on the east coast, and just a broad ridge extending from the central Rockies into Texas. Just a quick look at the 500 millibar chart this evening to get our bearings shows that the northern stream is becoming dominant. We are still in a split flow pattern. There's the southern split pretty much right there in Texas all the way back to the eastern Pacific and we've got this cutoff low just off the California coast. In between a ridge across Arizona and Nevada and in the northern stream, a couple of large medium-scale troughs coming through, one over the Great Lakes and another in Alberta. And there's what we have at jet stream level. We've got winds of about 120 knots across the southeastern U.S. and another jet max flowing in across the Gulf of Alaska into British Columbia. Elsewhere, the flow is a little bit weaker. Here's what the visible satellite picture looked like earlier today. We've got that cold air flowing south through the Great Lakes region. And advancing this to the current time, well, it is getting late. We got kind of a late start on the show. We switch over to infrared imagery. And there it picks up mostly the mid and high clouds. Remember that cloud field we had there over Kentucky? Well, you can definitely see it there on the visible imagery, but it kind of disappears as we get the infrared satellite coverage. And that's because the infrared channel not really sensitive to those low-level conditions. The surface plots and radar does show precip breaking out from north of State College into Pittsburgh and down towards Charleston. Got that north flow coming in behind the front, temperatures in the 30s. The leading edge of that cold air mass appears to be somewhat like this extending out towards the Chicago area. Gusty north winds at Chicago. Let me pan that over. And there it is. 34 degrees with winds gusting out of the north. Snow coming down, but as you go south, warms up to 50 degrees at Mattoon, Illinois. The southeastern U.S. looking pretty good, but those lapse rates are coming up. A little bit of instability there, not a whole lot of moisture, but there's one axis right there through the Appalachians into northern Alabama and a mesoscale boundary from around Myrtle Beach 
out towards Columbia, some showers going up along that boundary. There's a look at the surface chart in that area. The atmosphere is definitely drier. Dew points in the 20s, 30s, and 40s, but this little corridor of slightly enhanced moisture, dew points in the lower 50s, supporting this cluster of thunderstorms around Myrtle Beach back towards Columbia. And you can check it out on the radar right there. A couple of cells moving east-southeast and behaving very much like northwesterly flow storms. And we resolve that with the surface chart. That boundary located right in here doesn't really resolve to anything on the synoptic chart, so that certainly is some sort of mesoscale boundary. And we've got this other baroclinic wave in Illinois. That's going to be dropping east-southeast. And we do have a winter weather advisory in the Blue Ridge Mountains above 2,000 feet. Could be about 2 to 3 inches with more in the higher elevations. Not much going on in the central U.S. Dry weather, but we do have fire weather watches in parts of eastern and northeastern New Mexico, northwestern Kansas, adjoining regions of Colorado and Nebraska. Those are going to be over the weekend for warm temperatures, dry conditions, and gusty winds. And a high wind watch is in effect Sunday and Monday for parts of Wyoming, looking for gusts up to 75 miles an hour in places like Casper, Cheyenne, Douglas, and Rawlings. The satellite imagery showing subtropical cirrus spreading into western Texas and southern New Mexico. Cold air advection cumulus, most of this is elevated across the central U.S. And yes, we do have wildfires breaking out all across southeastern Oklahoma and western Arkansas. A couple of big ones out there around Mena. And at the very end, you can see the infrared picking those hot spots up. There they are right there. And up in the northern plains, we catch the tail end of that front. Here we have the developing baroclinic system in Illinois, the surface low located southwest of Chicago right there. And basically that's a Alberta clipper forming and coming together, frontogenesis, cyclogenesis, and increasing chances of precipitation across parts of the Midwest. The southwestern states getting a break this evening, but that Pacific moisture is flowing in once again. We've got that progressive pattern, which means waves from the Pacific are moving into the continental interior. And there's our first sign of trouble, a closed low well west of California. We'll take a look at that on the Pacific analysis shortly. In the northwestern U.S., we have fair skies across much of the region. We do have high wind watches today and Saturday in western Montana, and they are battening down the hatches for Sunday night into Monday across much of Idaho as the next big weather system makes its move inland. The Pacific analysis... How many channels give you one of these? Well, there it is. There's our frontal system off of California. Another one moving through the Gulf of Alaska. Otherwise, high pressure starting to show up on these maps, and we're going to see a lot more of that as we head into spring and summer. The Alaska and Canada weather maps shows most of the significant weather in the Gulf of Alaska and in the Canadian prairies. Alaska itself looking pretty good, just a winter weather advisory around Point Hope and Point Lay. In central Canada, this is a setup for an Alberta clipper. That's the next surge of cold air coming south. Triple point right there, and all of that just gradually works into the Dakotas and Montana. And you'll see this on the U.S. chart in a little bit. Cold air also flowing into Quebec. They have flash freeze warnings around Quebec City and Roberval, and extreme cold warnings tonight further north up to the hydro project districts. And for our friends in Europe, there's a quick check of the weather there. Strong northwesterly flow entering the Bay of Biscay into France and Spain. A strong frontal system moving through Poland and the Czech Republic. Nothing else to the west except this one system there in the mid-Atlantic and out there in Quebec. Yeah, you can see the strong 
outbreak of cold air moving into Montreal, Quebec City, and some of it also heading into Labrador. Anyway, most of us want to know what's going to happen in the U.S. Here's the current weather picture. Most of the significant moisture is on the East Coast and across Florida. A large chunk of the country there under dry conditions. So what are we looking at for the next big weather maker? That's going to probably be the surge coming up tomorrow into Texas and Oklahoma. It looks like about half an inch of precipitable water and increasing in South Texas. Also some moisture moving into Southern California and another surge with that North Stream into Seattle and Portland. So we're up to Sunday here. The moisture keeps increasing in Texas and increasing just as well there in California. Offshore over one inch of precipitable water. Then going into Monday and Tuesday, quite a bit of moisture flooding in California. Lots of moisture into the Southern Mississippi River Valley and we're going well above an inch, all the way up to an inch and a half there for early Wednesday. And that's probably going to support an MCS somewhere in the Ohio River Valley or the southeastern U.S. And there's how things shape up by Thursday. Another surge coming up into Texas. So it looks very wet for that southern stream. And that's pretty much what we expect during an El Nino season with an active southern stream. So... It appears that Southern Stream will be in our weather picture once again. So let's look at that forecast chart sequence. I've got the fronts all analyzed for you. There's the Bear Clinic Low in northern Illinois. You're going to see that track east-southeast tonight. So there's midnight and there's 6 in the morning. A track of snow from about Indianapolis down to about Cincinnati an occlusion through the Blue Ridge Mountains and the triple point up there in far northern Georgia. A shallow fetch of cold air coming down into Tennessee, Kentucky, and Missouri. And there's the next surge up there to the north. And you can see that coming on down Saturday and Sunday and affecting mostly the Midwest. A very meager push of cold air. And in fact, I did not even really analyze it there on Monday. Our attention shifts to the northwest, another big Pacific weather system rapidly moving into the central plains for Tuesday, and we could see some severe weather potential by late Tuesday into Wednesday. That still is not really clear at this point. Strong cold air advection coming down through the central plains, and that's supporting some bands of snow there with that very intense lift aft of that front. On the tail end of that front, a disturbance comes together in North Mexico and pushes east along the Gulf Coast. Some rain and maybe a few thunderstorms on Thursday in Louisiana and Mississippi. Then we have kind of a downslope pattern across much of the plains. Some moisture returns starting to set up for Friday. And then over the weekend, another strong Pacific weather system. That's the last chart in the sequence, 985 millibar low in Colorado. And chances are we may be seeing a dry line setting up along the cap rock. And that will do it for this edition of Forecast Lab. Remember, you can support the program by heading over to Patreon, or you can pick up a book at weathergraphics.com. That is my website, and that's where I sell my forecasting books, so please consider that. All right, I hope you all have a great weekend, and we've got a lot of active weather coming up for next week, and we'll cover that on Monday for the supporters and on Wednesday for everybody else. Take care, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.